Hallelujah. So this morning we want to transition over to the word of the living God. We have sat and we worship and we praise God and we feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We feel the blessings of the Holy Spirit. We feel that anointing, amen, coming down even as you worship. <clears throat> Just remember me in my prayer, my voice seemed to be going. Praise God, but we worship the Lord. We praise the Lord this morning. And this morning um, we want to turn to uh, four portions of scriptures. The book of Genesis, four portion of scriptures, the book of Genesis chapter 3, the book of Genesis chapter 3 verses 13 to 15, the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 13 to 15, the book of First John chapter 3 verses 11 to 13, the book of First John chapter 3 verses 11 to 13, and then the First Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 21 to 26. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 21 to 26, and also 45. And then the last portion of scripture is Joel 2, 28 to 32. Joel 2, 28 to 32. So let's look, let's read in the book of Genesis. <clears throat> Genesis is always a beginning. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. And in Genesis you find... All the beginning of the revelation of God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Praise God. Amen. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, reading verse 13 to 15. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field, upon thy belly shall thou go, and dust shall be thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Let's read the uh, book of First John. First John. <clears throat> First John chapter three, verse eleven to thirteen. First John chapter three, <clears throat> eleven to thirteen. For this is the message that he heard from the beginning, that he should love one another, not as Cain who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother righteous. Amen. And marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. And then we turn to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses... 21 to 26 and then 45. Verses 21. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, <coughs> Christ the first fruits, afterwards they that are in Christ are his coming. Then come at the end, then come at the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority, for he must reign until he hath put all enemies under his feet. And the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And then verse 45, For so is it written, the first man Adam was made a living soul, the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. And the last portion of scripture in the book of Joel, the book of Joel, chapter 2, the book of Joel, chapter 2, reading for verse 28, 28 to 32. Now listen closely to what is written in the book of Joel. <clears throat> now he's talking about the last days here. And it shall come to pass afterwards, and afterwards here if you read, 
your if you read your concordance and your Greek um, translation, it means in the last days. So it shall come to pass afterwards, or in the last days, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and the old men shall dream dreams, and the young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens, in those days will I pour out my spirit, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and dreadful day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord had said and in the remnant whom he shall, the Lord shall call. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word, shall we pray. Father God, this morning we come before you, Lord, or with our feeble efforts, Lord, but we sat at the feet of the Lord Jesus. We love Him, we adore Him, we praise Him, we worship Him. We love, Lord, we love to read about Him, we love to hear about Him. We love to see His precious and wonderful face, all full of glory and mercy and compassion and love. We love you, Lord Jesus. We adore you, Lord Jesus. We live for you, Lord Jesus. We sing, we sang songs of Zion unto you, Lord. I have decided to follow Jesus. And all these wonderful songs that we sang unto you, Lord, it's not by might, not by power, but by that Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of the man Christ Jesus. And we love you, Lord. So this morning, Lord, many people could take this Bible and they could read the Word. They could hear the Word, Lord, intellectually. And, they, and someone could take all the Scriptures and have an intellectual conception of it, Lord. And, and with an intellectual teaching, about how to catch the mind of God and how to catch the mind of the prophet and how to how to see what how to pick his brain, prophet brain. And they could do all this and how they could pick the brain of the prophets that wrote these words. But Lord, we not in the physical realm. We are in the spiritual realm this morning. Glory to God. We are praying this morning that that great Holy Spirit that wrote these words come out of the pages of these words that we have read and vindicate it to your people, Lord God. Vindicate it, these words, Lord, so signs, wonders, miracles will follow this word, Lord. People will be healed, people will be sealed, people will be delivered. They will receive the Holy Spirit. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the crippled will walk, Lord. We are looking for that mighty revival in the bride, in the individual, in the bride of Jesus Christ, Lord. May it start this morning as the jubilee trumpet is being sounded. Grant it, Lord God, we pray this morning. We love you and adore you, great eternal Father. Hear our prayer this morning. And Lord, touch the people, open up their ears, open up their hearts, open up their understanding. In the, and touch me also, I pray, my throat. And <clears throat> you know, the devil fights, Lord, because he doesn't want to hear, he doesn't want to hear, doesn't want to hear this word, Lord God. He doesn't want to hear this, the true revealed word of the living God. And Father, this morning, may your great Holy Spirit come amongst us in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So this morning for a, a, a title, this morning for a title, The Serpent Seed and the Seed of the Woman in the Last Days. For a title, The Serpent Seed and the Seed of the Woman in this Last Days. Amen. That's the title this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. And what is our subject? Our subject this morning is the Lord Jesus Christ, the second Adam. Our subject is the Lord Jesus Christ, the second Adam. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ, the second Adam. And what is our inspiration this morning? Why are we want to look at this topic? I mean, a lot of people has, have speculated and talked about it and, and looked and, 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 and seen and, and uh, you know, and speculate and suggest and so on. But this morning we want to f hear the mind of God. We want to understand, understand the anointing on the two seeds. So we're not just looking at just the seed itself, probably we could address it another day, but we want to look at the anointing on the two seeds and what it produces. Amen? We want to know, on the, in this last days, what happens to the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. Amen? 
No, you say, well, Brother Sipa said that sounds very strange because you say in the seed of a woman, well, the Bible say there shall be a woman's seed. And then Isaiah spoke about it, said, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, Prince of Peace, uh, uh, you know, Lord God Almighty, the Father with us. Amen? So we, we know and we understand this morning that, that God, uh, you know, spoke these words. You know, he said it in the Garden of Eden. God spoke it in the Garden of Eden that there will be the serpent seed and then there will be the, the, um, the seed of the woman. So we just want to summarize this morning. I'm not going to go into detail about the serpent seed and the beast and what happened in the Garden of Eden, but we're going to summarize. <clears throat> we, want to, uh, we want to summarize it because we want to look at, there are two aspects of it. <clears throat> anytime God says something, anytime there's prophecy in the Bible, there's two applications to it. There's a physical application and there's a spiritual application. Amen? When God says yea, he means yea. When he says nay, he means nay. And there's always, amen, his word will always come to pass. Like in the days of Isaiah, I always make this example. Isaiah said, behold, a virgin shall conceive. A king said, you know, uh, uh, Isaiah said, I'll give you a sign. The king said, no, 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 I don't want a sign. Isaiah said, God say that you're going to get a sign. And that sign is, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. <clears throat> and his name shall be Emmanuel. He shall be Prince of Peace and all that, and all that wonderful um, things that are, that are, that are uh, on the law for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But you know, the king is watching. One year pass. The people, the people in... Um, one second. The people in... In the days of Isaiah, waited one year, the prophecy didn't come to pass. Two years, ten years, the prophecy didn't come to pass. Everybody's looking. They even say, you know, something, something is wrong with this man, you know, because how can a virgin conceive? So, Isaiah died. The prophecy didn't come to pass. You know what a lot of people said, the seed of the serpent said? The seed of the serpent, as influenced by the devil, said, he's a false prophet. He lied. He has the, God didn't speak to him. 100 years pass, they can still continue. Oh, Isaiah probably eat some bitter herbs or smoke some mandrake weed or something happened to him that day and, and he got up on the wrong side of the bed or something. A lot of critics. It didn't come to pass. 500 years. 700 years. No, 699 years. It still didn't come to pass. But about 700 years afterwards, what happened? God sent the angel Gabriel down to a virgin, amen, whose name was Mary, and she was come in Nazareth, and, and the angel Gabriel came forth and spoke those words, amen, hallelujah, and say that Yo, you shall bring forth a son, and that which is conceived of the Holy Spirit is going to be Emmanuel, is going to be a fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. 700 years. So don't doubt what a prophet says. You will say, oh, I don't understand, I don't understand. Well, can you understand the mind of God? No, we can't understand the mind of God. So what you do, you believe it, you leave it alone, you move on and God is going to reveal it. <clears throat> How many times I'm going to summarize what happened in the Garden of Eden? How many times you have read the book of Genesis? How many times as a, a young boy, we have read Genesis, young girl has read Genesis, not understanding. But I want to tell you something this morning. I want to let you know that God has sent a prophet, just as he sent a prophet uh, Moses, just as he sent a prophet Elijah, then just as he sent a prophet uh, Ezekiel and Jeremiah and uh, Micah and others, he sent a prophet called William Marion Branham for this seventh age. Amen. How do you know he's a prophet? You have to check the scripture. You have to match the scripture with a, with, a, with a man's life to understand that if if that man is a prophet or not. Amen. And what is a prophet? A prophet is a reflection of God's word. What is a prophet? A prophet is someone who hears from God, lip to air. Amen. And tells the people. A prophet comes at a junction of time when there's a, a oncoming judgment, when there's oncoming storm. A prophet comes and tells the people get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready because the storm is coming. But get ready, get ready, get ready. Oh, but God is going to rescue you. Just like Noah was a prophet. He said, get ready, get ready, get ready. There's judgment coming. Amen. Water is coming to flood the earth. Nobody knew what was raining in those days. But Noah was preparing an ark. He said, but God is going to save, save you if you could come into the ark. But only eight souls were saving the ark. But God sent a prophet called Noah to tell the people that judgment is coming. Amen. God sent Moses to deliver the people out of Israel. So why can't God send in this 20th 
third century a prophet to tell us about the coming of the Lord. He will fulfill Malachi chapter 4 verse 5 and 6. He will fulfill Reve- uh, Revelation 10 verse 7. Amen. He will ref- uh, um, fulfill uh, Amos 3. Amen. He will re- fulfill Revelation chapter 3 14 to 22. Amen. What is it? It's a prophet of God to tell you how to get ready. And we looked across the face of the earth. You, in your days, you must always look to see what is God's messenger for that age. Oh, who is God's messenger of that age? We look and we see all the robbers. Wonderful man of God. Lay hands upon the sick. Signs, wonders, miracles, follow him. But did he have the revelation of the word to bring the people how to get ready for the rapture? No, he didn't. He has died and gone on. We look at Billy Graham. Great man of God. Mighty man of God. Sent by God. But was he a prophet? Did he bring the people to the revelation of the word? Did he reveal a word to the people to tell them how to get ready for this great rapture. No, he didn't. Great message. Wonderful man of God. But he preached repentance and he brought the people to the Lord Jesus Christ. We see all the mighty men in this end time. Mighty preachers. Good men. But they do not come up to the level of a prophet except a man called William Marion Branham. No, you say, Brother Sipasad, I found in the internet where they say all kind of stuff on the man. I just read one recently where they talk about Brother Billy Paul, uh, Brother Billy Paul um, um, talk with Brother Branham about Los Angeles and about sharks swimming and so on. I read that recently and they tried to bore holes through it and all sorts of stuff. But did they look at the other thousands and thousands and thousands of things that came to pass? Amen. That not one fail. They always say, "Well, he his prophecy didn't come to pass." You know, they they are the same. They are the same spirit that say uh, Isaiah prophecy didn't come to pass. They are the same ones. Just you wait. But I just want you to know about something that I found out recently, brother and sister. You see, God does things, and then let it go, and then after a while, He's going to stop you, and He's going to say, "Hey, my son, look, you see, right there." A few days ago, a few months ago, a few years ago, I brought prophecy to pass. There was it. It's done. It's over. And that's how God does it sometimes. Amen? That's how He does it. Now, He could tell you things are going to happen in the future. He will tell you. But sometimes, what you know, how do we know there's a word of God? When it's vindicated, revealed, and manifested. Then we say, ah, yes, Lord, I see it. Amen. I see it, Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Blessed. Be the name of the Lord. So I was to tell you about Brother Billy Paul Branham. I just want to give you that testimony. Brother Billy Paul Branham testified that Brother Branham and Billy Paul and his dad, uh, Brother Branham was there standing in May's, I think it was May's um, uh, a department store down in, um, uh, in downtown Los Angeles. May's department store. And, and there was uh, some question about what Brother Branham say about Capernaum and what Brother Branham say about Los Angeles going to sink into the sea. Amen. <clears throat> some people say, well, that was a common knowledge in 1933. It was not. It was not a common knowledge. People know there were earthquakes. There's all been earthquakes in California. But it was not a common knowledge that California will sink into the sea because of a sandbar underneath. That was not common knowledge. God spoke it. Amen. And it's going to happen. So, so people were questioning Brother Branham. <clears throat> so Billy Paul said, Dad, you know, people are questioning you about this prophecy about Capernaum and <clears throat> about Los Angeles. He said, Billy Paul, that is the word of the Lord. Amen. He said, Billy Paul, where are you standing <clears throat> right now? Billy Paul says, I'm standing in downtown Los Angeles. He said, be more specific. <clears throat> he said, I'm standing in, 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 in Macy's, uh, no, in Mays, in Mays department store, downtown Los Angeles. Uh, uh, Los Angeles, California. Brother Abraham said, Billy, you will not be an old man until you see sharks swimming. Amen. Right where you're standing. Amen. You'll be sharks swimming here in front of this building. Of course, he was talking about May, May's building. Amen. Now, up to now, everybody's still looking for this prophecy to come to pass. Everybody say, well, Billy's an old man now, you know. He's 86 years old. That's got to be an old man. Before, an old man is after you cross 7 and 80. You know, an old man. So, oh, then that, that's false what Brother Abraham said. No, brother and sister. I came across, someone sent me a clip where an, a, 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 a little um, pic, a little movie clip that shows a brother was testifying that somewhere in the 70s or the 80s, amen, 
I, I, I have to still go back and get the exact date of that earthquake. There was a great earthquake in California, and it shook California so much that the, 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 the tide brought in oh, uh, fishes and, 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 and sharks, amen, on the right where Billy Paul was standing. And there was a memo sent out to the department uh, uh, employees in, Mo, in Mays. He said, do not go down to the basement, amen. Do not go because the basement was open out like, you know. He said, don't go to the basement because there are sharks and fishes and so on swimming down there, amen, and all in the streets. And, and we have to wait for the water to subside and for the sharks to go back and for the fishes and so on to go back, for the sea to recede. We are waiting for it to, to this low tide, amen. So, brother and sister, it has already happened. It has already taken place. Why you think you're waiting on brother Billy Paul to be a old man? No, I have also considered that. I said, you know, but he's an old man now, Lord, and how does something happen yet? It has already taken place somewhere in the late 70s, amen. And if you check the late 70s or the early 80s, then you, you subtract 20 years, then Billy was not an old man. He was 60s. He was in his 60s. He was just coming up to his 70, according to the Bible. Three score and ten, 70 years is a lot of time God gives to a man. And if because of strength, you go more than 70 to 80 because of strength. So Billy was not an old man. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And it was re already happened. What I'm trying to show you, I'm trying to show you that anointing that was upon a genuine seed word of God, the prophet William Marion Branham, spoke a word, amen, and it came to pass, hallelujah, it is already over, brother and sister, already taken place, amen, hallelujah, so this morning, remember, there's always two uh, meanings, amen, ecclesiastical or a spiritual meaning, and a physical meaning to the word of the Lord God, so we want to consider these things this morning, we want to talk about that serpent seed, now in the Garden of Eden, you all know the, the biblical history uh, uh, message that, um, that, uh, that Satan, that God put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. They were naked. They were like children. They didn't know anything. Amen. And what happened? God also had created beasts of the field. Now this beast of the field was, uh, was almost like a man. This beast of the field was a link between the gorilla or the chimpanzee and the human being. And their seed could have intermingled because uh, uh, we are an uh, animal, we are an animal uh, body, amen. And that's how we reproduce in the, in the way the animals reproduce. So you see a cow and a, and a goat and, and a sheep and all, that's how they reproduce. We are reproduced in the same way, amen, hallelujah. And that in the Garden of Eden, there was this beast. And this beast was not a serpent yet. He was not a snake yet. And he was walking upright on two feet. Amen. He could have speak because he communicated to Eve. No, so he couldn't go to Adam to talk to him too much about what to try to, to talk to sweet talk Adam. No, 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 no. What he did. And we don't know how long this have taken place. Maybe it took years and years and years. A hundred years, two hundred years, three hundred. I don't know. But this beast worked on Eve. He was a caretaker of the garden. Now this beast also had, had wives. Amen. Because he was a beast of the field. Because a bull had a lot of a lot of um, cows, amen, a, a ram goat has a lot of um, other cows, a ram and a, a sheep has a lot of uh, other um, female, and so it was in the Garden of Eden that this beast had many wives, he, had, well, we, he wasn't really called wives as such, but he was to, re to reproduce himself, amen, he had a seed, this serpent, this beast had a seed, hallelujah, had a seed, oh glory to God, amen, and Adam had a seed, Hallelujah. But Adam was not to bring forth a seed in the physical sense, lad. Adam was to be like what God to speak the word. And his sons and daughters would appear. Virgil. Amen. Well, man, maybe my name would have been Virgil. I don't know. But my, uh, but uh, it will have an E-L part of it. Amen. Like Abel or something, you know. Because I'm a part of God. He would have called me out of the dust of your glory. Hallelujah. Praise God and then my, that, that spirit that come from God would have come down into that dust and there I would have been a son of God. Amen. There was no sex. Amen. No supposed to be no sexual desire. We were not supposed to be reproduced by animals. Amen. Although God gave us an animal body so that we could do what? So we could have tilled the soil, take care of the garden, dress the garden, walk through the garden. Amen. We were in spirit form walking through the garden of Eden. Amen. But this beast, amen, was an animal. Amen. Was 
was a little above the, the, the gorilla, a little above the chimpanzee or the orangutan or whatever, a little above that, but you could have bred with, uh, with, with a human being. And he seduced Eve. He talked to Eve. Amen. And, and today, uh, I mean, I was talking to, uh, yesterday talking to my wife about some of the exact things that may happen. But I have to, I have to tell you in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in sort of, um, you got to read between the lines. So he sweet talk her. He talked to her nice. He said, you're lovely. You're looking good. And, and uh, you know, as, as the saying goes, seduced her. Amen. He seduced her. Now the beast, amen, knew how to have sex because he was having sex with the animals. But even Adam didn't know about that. Surely it's to see the animal having sex to reproduce. But they wouldn't, they, they, uh, they, the Adam and Eve didn't know anything about that. They were innocent. They didn't think about it. Amen. But what happened this morning? Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm just looking at something here. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. So what we're seeing this morning, praise the name of the Lord. So Adam and Eve were innocent. They didn't understand this. They didn't know these things. But so what happened? What the beast did now? He's now teaching Eve. He's now telling how this thing is so good. It will make you feel good. Your your your, your eyes will be open up. You'll feel uh, sexy. You'll feel good. Amen. Now um, you gotta reveal. You gotta you gotta read between the lines. Now what did God say? What did God say to Adam? Let's read what God said to Adam and read. And you gotta read between the lines. Now God did not say this to Eve. Eve was not formed yet, but he said this to Adam. Amen. And hear what he said to Adam. Praise God. Let's just read it. Um, hear what he read in uh, chapter 2, verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat it. For in the day that thou eatest it, thou shalt surely die. So but, but the Lord said, it, the, the tree that was in the midst of the garden. Hear what he says. The woman now says, hear what the woman says now. Now, God didn't tell Eve, you know. Eve was not even created yet, but he told Adam. So Adam told Eve, Eve, God said, don't touch this tree here. No, he didn't say don't touch. He said, don't eat of this tree that is in the midst of the garden. Look what the Bible say here. And the, and the, the Lord, and the woman said unto the serpent, verse 2 in uh, chapter 3, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, which is a physical fruit. You could go and pick and eat anything that is in the garden physically, but spiritually. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, he said, Thou shalt not eat of it, neither touch it, lest he die. So, well, let's look at uh, uh, what may have happened in the Garden of Eden. We're going to be running through quickly. You've got to read between the lines. How... Can Adam, uh, how can um, the devil seduce Eve? Amen? Think about what he had to do. I mean, read between the lines, brothers and sisters. We don't want to go into too much detail. Think about what he has to do to seduce Eve. What does a man do to seduce a woman? All right, so think about that. Amen. That's what happened in the Garden of Eden. And then they had sex. Amen. In the Garden of Eden. And she and the seed of the beast... Amen. But what happened before that? Satan entered into the beast to make him think this way. The beast was not created to think this way, but Satan entered to the beast. Now, Satan cannot give you a seed. Satan has no seed. Do you know that? He cannot create. Satan cannot reproduce himself. He cannot. Only God and God's sons and God's daughter can reproduce themselves. Amen. Satan cannot reproduce. All he can do is to... Is to um, all he could do is to, all he could do is to pervert what God has, has created. Amen? So remember this, Satan cannot reproduce. Amen? So what he did, he came into the beast, and the beast planted his seed inside of Eve, inside her womb. Amen? He had intercourse with her, planted the seed inside her womb, and then, and then what happened? Eve felt it was good. It was wonderful. You know, she felt, uh, you know, very sexy and sweet and she went in a realm and you know how it is. Read between the lines. What happened? She went to Adam. Amen. Adam, remember, Adam was an innocent man. Adam knew nothing about this. I, but many times he probably hugged Eve, he kissed Eve, but there were no feelings as such. So now, you've got to read between the lines, my brother and sister. God said, 
don't touch that tree that is in the midst of the garden. Amen. Don't touch the tree. Don't even eat it. Amen. Eat. Think about that word. So how did Eve arouse Adam? What did God say? Don't eat of that tree that's in the midst of the garden. And then when Adam was aroused, Eve showed him what, the, what Satan showed him, showed her. And then Adam now planted his seed in Eve. So there were two seeds in the Garden of Eden that was planted in Eve. The seed of the serpent, which brought forth Cain, and the seed of Adam, which was the seed of God, came forth Abel. Amen? So now read between the lines, brother and sister. This is what took place in, in the Garden of Eden. So what God came down and did, he asked the serpent, what did you do? Why did he see it? Se seduce. He, the word beguile, if you check the Greek, it means to seduce. And there's only one thing you seduce, you seduce to have a relationship with someone. Amen? So what happened and what took place, brother and sister? That Eve said, the serpent make me do it. So God cursed the serpent. But hear what he did. He gave a promise. He said, the seed of the woman, amen, will bruise your heel. The seed of the woman. Now how could a woman have a seed? A woman cannot have a seed. Amen? Only a man has the seed. That means that, that a woman must bring forth a seed that must not come from the, from the lineage of the first Adam. That woman must bring forth a seed that, that, uh, that must not come from the lineage all the way from Adam all the way down. So that seed was not Joseph's seed. But what it was? It was the Holy Ghost. Just as he created Adam. Amen. He created Adam, formed a body. But here it is. He formed a cell. Amen. A, a life cell. And put it in the womb of, of uh, Mary. Amen. So Mary brought forth a seed without even knowing any human being, any man. So what was that? That was the second Adam. What was that? A quickening spirit. Amen. What was this Adam? A Adam that will not fall, no matter what the temptation. Why? Because it was God himself coming down to redeem man. Amen. So let's talk a little bit about the serpent seed. Now I'm going to read a, <coughs> I'm going to read a lot of script, a lot of quotes. I'm going to read a few quotes from the prophet brother William Marion Branham because in the days of the prophet when he preached this word the word of the Lord went from behind the prophet and went unto the people signs, wonders, miracles took place and only that people were healed, people were sealed people were delivered so now look, we got to look about now remember Satan doesn't have a seed he doesn't he cannot reproduce himself all he could do is, to, is what he did in the garden of Eden Possess the beast, and out of the beast came forth the serpent seed. So we are talking about the serpent seed. And who is the serpent seed? Amen. The serpent seed are those rejectors. Let's read it. <clears throat> Why are we not a denomination? Jeffersonville, Indiana, 27th of September 1958, Saturday. Quote Brabranum, paragraph 86. Here we are. This is the hour we are living in, brother. We are in the place. Can't you see how that mother's back yonder and daddy's how they lived? And grandpa and grandma? Can't you see how papa and mama was lived? No wonder we in the corruption today. No wonder we could preach your head off. They'll wear shorts and just the same and spit in your face. They'll smoke cigarettes. They'll blow it right at you and say, tend to your own business. Why? Because that's the tribe they come out of. I'm going to get to that directly. The seed of the serpent. We'll find out where she moves in. See? Why they act like that? They are the devil's children since the foundation of the world. That's right. And we are nothing in left. Just the judgment of the thing is left. Can't have nothing else but judgment. God will just wipe the whole thing out. And man has done it themselves. God didn't, want, God didn't intend it to be that way. But he knew it would be that way. That's the reason he said he would deceive all that lived upon the face of the earth. Except those names that were written, written in the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world. Amen? End of quote. So what you're seeing, the seed of the serpent, amen, are those are the devil's children since the foundation of the world. The seed of the serpent. These are physical beings that, even, that are existing today that has nothing of God in them at all. You go down the streets, they condemn the, the Bible, they curse, they blaspheme. 
They are the seeds of the serpent. They are the seeds of, and they are possessed. And because they are seeds of the serpent, they could be possessed by the devil. Because that's his children. Amen. He not his created children, but his children came through um, the seed, came through the serpent. So anyone that is coming and cursing you, and coming and talking against you, and blaspheming the Holy Spirit, they are the seed of the serpent, my brother and sister. Amen. The seed of the serpent. Hallelujah. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jeffersonville, Indiana. <clears throat> 28th of September, 1958. Morning service. Sunday. Paragraph 78. And now before we can finish that subject, we'll have to pick it up tonight in the seed of the serpent under the seed of the woman and bring it down to show you why it is. See how that seed of the serpent moved down. How that seed of the woman moved down. How the seed of the serpent begin to predominate, predominate, get bigger and greater and greater and greater and greater until there's nothing left but just a small remnant, a little small remnant of names still left written from the foundation of the world. And when the body has been formed and the last names are on the book be recognized here on the earth, the books are closed. It is completed. The story of redemption has completed. Paragraph 81. And then the first great spirit of God, which was love. God is like the great rainbow. We could imagine what he looks like. But just say he looked like a rainbow in spirit. The perfect spirit of love. Red, blue, the perfect spirit of fellowship. Just all the perfect spirits. And when they begin to condescend him, coming down, and they come all the way down from a filial love to a gapo love, to filial love, and down to lust, and down to lust, and then God himself become a man, which was the seed of the woman, become a man, Jesus, and came down the same way to the lowest pits of hell, and picked out those who he knew before the foundation of the world, whose names were written on the book, and redeemed them back unto himself. There you are, the story of redemption, cannot be fully known until we see him and stand in his presence. Oh, blessed in the end of court. So what we're saying, brother and sister, what we're saying is that that seed of the serpent has come right through. They're the ones that are might great scientists. Dr. S- Dr. F. Uh, uh, Fauci and others like that, you know. Um, I don't mean to call names, but they are seeds of the serpent, brother. They are leading these people down astray. This government is controlled by the devil. They are, you think that most of those politicians there are, 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 are full of the Holy Spirit? No, brother. They are liars and cheaters and, 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 and all they're concerned about themselves and about power and money. Amen. So what it is, brother and sister, they are seeds of the serpent. They want to take control of this world. They want to take control of your life. They're trying to control your body. That's why they're trying to control. They cannot control your soul. They cannot control your spirit. They cannot control the Holy Ghost that is in you. All they could do is try to control your body. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. They're trying to control your body. Oh, praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. But they cannot control you, brother. The deep down inside is eternal life. Deep down inside is that seed of the woman. Deep down inside is the Holy Spirit. You are born of His flesh. You are you are born of His bone. You are spirit of His spirit. Amen. And the seed, the second Adam, had seeds. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. The second Adam seed didn't really came to to be manifested until He died on Calvary. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. That was the seed of the woman. The seed of the woman took place on Calvary. And when he died, oh, that seed broke, broke forth. That germ of life broke forth. That germ of life came 50 days after his resurrection. That germ of life, what it produced? They produced sons and daughters. It produced the seed of the woman. Multiplied again. It produced seed. Amen. Please, oh, Holy Ghost uh, children produce what? Seven color rainbow children. And that's what he was doing through the whole church ages. He was bringing forth, hallelujah, the seed of the woman. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. But the seed of the serpent, 
was the first seal. When you look at that first, under that first seal, I mean, when you look at that under that first seal, there was a Roman Catholic Church. You think the Roman Catholic Church is of God? No, brother, that's the seed of Satan. That's the seed of the serpent. Amen. No, I'm not saying uh, they, are, they are good Roman Catholics and some who will be saved. Of course, I'm not talking about Roman Catholics who will be saved. But when someone come against that word, when someone come against that word that is in you, when someone comes and blaspheme that Holy Spirit, that saying that 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 thing that is upon you and shaking you up like that's of a devil. Oh, do you know that that's blasphemy? When they see you under the anointing and you praising God and they say you have a devil upon you, that is blasphemy. They are the seed of the serpent. There is one you could identify when you go to a uh, when you go to a coconut tree. What do you expect to get? Do you expect to get mango? No, 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 no. You will get coconuts. Amen. And you go to a mango tree or an apple tree. What you will get at that tree? Amen. You will get what? Apples. You wouldn't get uh, 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 watermelons. You wouldn't get anything like that. Why? Because that seed down deep down inside that apple tree deep down, that life is of an apple. It will always bring forth an apple. Once that life comes up into the bark, it comes up into the leaves, it will always bring forth an apple. And the seed of the serpent will always bring forth wickedness will bring forth blasphemy, will bring will be forth adultery and fornication, lasciviousness and smoking and drinking. You tell me you still smoking cigarette, you come into church and you trying to play guitar to worship God, or you get that evil spirit out of you, brother and sister. Amen. That is a devil upon you. I don't care how good you could play the guitar. I don't play, care how good you could sing. I don't care well, how you look so good. Oh, no, 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 brother. By the fruits you shall know them. And when I look at you and know that you have done, done have you come to repent? Repentance? Have you received the Holy Spirit? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord, the seed of the serpent. Oh, praise God. Amen. And you say, well, brother Sipasad, what is that physical seed of the serpent? The physical seed of the serpent is those bodies. Amen. Of that whole, uh, indiv uh, that whole uh, individuals. That has blasphemed against the Holy Spirit. That has come against the Holy Spirit. That body that you're looking at there, those 16 elements, is a descendant from the beast of the Garden of Eden. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. And that child of God, hallelujah, that you're seeing full of the Holy Ghost. No, he's full of the Holy Ghost. Is what? A descendant from Adam. Amen. That's the physical sense. That's the difference. No, it's not the color of the hair. No, it's not the, 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 the whether you're curly hair or non curly hair or no hair. No, it's not that, brother. That's not the difference. Amen. How do you know? You know by the Holy Ghost or the devil in them. Oh, praise God. Amen. Now also be careful. There are some that are possessed by the devils, but they have the Holy Spirit. God will bring them to you. To you. I'm talking about those who condemn you, who fight you, who blaspheme against you. Blaspheme. There's no forgiveness of the Holy Spirit. It has no forgiveness. There are seeds of the serpent. Oh, praise God. In the days of Noah. Amen. Now you say, well, how did the seed of the serpent came forth? The seed of the serpent came forth from the wives of Noah's, of Noah's sons. Somewhere one of the, in, in Ham, mother, amen. The seed of the serpent came forth, amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. So we know that the seed of the serpent came through the ark also. The physical seed of the serpent and the spiritual seed of the serpent came through the ark, amen. Oh, so the first seed. The first seed was, was from Adam. Amen. The first seed was planted. Now that's the physical aspect. But we are looking for the second Adam. We're looking for that seed. We're looking for that spirit. Hallelujah. That killer was in the man Christ Jesus. The second Adam. I want that spiritual seed. And you get that spiritual seed by what? By the Holy Spirit coming upon you. Amen. And those who reject the Holy Spirit are what? Seeds of the serpent. Amen. They're seeds of the serpent. The, the serpent seed. <coughs> Jeffersonville, Indiana. Sunday the 28th of September 1958 evening service paragraph 270. Court Burbanum. I want to show, I want you, I want to show me, I want you to show me one scripture where it ever said an apple started the thing going. I want you to show me that they ate apples. I showed you that when, where Cain thought the same thing, where Siege still thinks the same thing. 
but the spiritual revelation of God reveals by the Bible that it was sexual intercourse between man and woman. Literally. That's where your giants come from. That's where your sin come from. That's where your corruption come from. That's where it come down. Amen. And the serpent was twice as smart. His seed was always been twice as smart. And I like to climb up on this pulpit and grab this microphone in my hand and stick my feet on the pulpit and say, Today, where are you all great intellectuals? Your pastor has gone down and gotten a lot of intellectual knowledge. And he stands up. He's the pastor of the biggest church. There's the country. Amen. Where does the seed of the serpent stay at? In the smart, intellectual, intelligent places like that. Smart, shrewd scholars. That's where he's at. That's where he says, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, said the Lord. Amen. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. And you take the little brothers down at the corner, crying his eyes out and maybe standing there and beating on an old guitar, saying, brothers, come to the Lord. Come find the Lord. A pastor, some sophisticated pastor walked by. He said, hmm, I wouldn't have that in my congregation. I wouldn't associate. Wouldn't let that little and Johnny and them see around such a place as that. See, go on, you seed of the devil. You headed for your eternal destination anyhow. That's right. I would have said another word here and said bastard children. And that's just about it. See, no man come to me except my father draws him. And all that comes to me, I'll raise him up in the last days. There's nothing going to be lost. I've got it. I'll keep it. No man can come, can do it except this. All lays in him. You all can't, you all can't say I'm done one thing. It's the grace of God that's done it. So nothing I've done. I never had a thing to do. You never, you never, neither. You never merited one thing. God did every bit of it. You never turned your finger to one part of it. You say, well, I come out of a good family. I did this. That don't have one thing to do with it. God in his mercy who did it. It's God's mercy. End of quote. So what we're saying here, brother, is you, you have nothing to do with it. You're called of God before the foundation world. You should be so grateful. You were living in some, some, uh, uh, maybe some, uh, heathen religion, being a Hindu, sitting in there with all these endless gods that never answer you. Amen. You are Hindu. But what God did, He knew you were seed. He sent the word of God to you. You like, your life lit up. Because why? Because deep down inside of you, you are what? You are seed of the woman. You are part of the seed of that woman, which is Christ Jesus. That when he died on the cross, and he said, it is finished. Amen. And blood and water came forth. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Then he sent the Holy Spirit. What? You are born of him. Amen. Just like Adam had Abel. Amen. And, 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 and Seth. And all his other sons. Amen. He was, that was a physical son. Amen. Adam had physical sons. Amen. But there's always a spiritual application to it. Hallelujah. So Jesus Christ, the great Elohim, living in human skin. Amen. Brought forth an Adam to have what? Sons and daughters. Amen. That you are seed. You are seed. You are gene. What is that gene? What is that seed? Oh, seven color rainbow. Oh, dear eternity. Hallelujah. We are churning out in eternity. Great almighty God. Amen. That's what he is. Hallelujah. The rainbow color. Uh, uh, living in his son Jesus. To what? To bring forth seed. Amen. And that is what happened in this age. You my brother and sister. Hallelujah. Oh we'll talk a little more about where, Let's continue on the. Uh, let's continue on the serpent seed a little bit. Question and answers, Jeffersonville, Indiana. COD book, Sunday, the 28th of June, 1958, evening service. Paragraph 88. <clears throat> Paragraph 88, quote by Branham. There's Lucifer. He once dwelt in Eden. Now we're going to come back to that question in a minute. Lucifer in Eden. Because we got the seed of the serpent down there somewhere, which is a very ticklish thing. You know, I, I wanted to read something for. Did I read it? No, I didn't read this. Here, what uh, this was uh, the serpent seed, paragraph um, two seventy four. Hallelujah, Amen. Praise God. Oh yes, I read it. Thank you. So here we go. And but he was the devil was kicked out of heaven, and every purpose that he tried to purpose in heaven, he came right down on earth, and he's trying his best to fulfill that which he purposed. See, now I interject here. What is his purpose? 
he had pride. He wanted to be some big somebody. He wanted to have a big following. He already have, he took two thirds of the angel. So he felt that he could influence everybody else and try to take all his angels. He tried, he thought he could influence and be better than God. Amen. Because remember, he was the right hand of God. We preach a little more on that some other day. But what we're saying. So that was his purpose. So Satan, he goes to the kings, to the rulers, when he can get them. Then he comes right down to the church and gets the people or gets the preacher. Then from the preacher, he goes right into the congregation and get into the congregation under the same influence, the same devil doing the same things. You say, you know, you're a Presbyterian. You'll never be a holy roller. You're this, you're that, you're other. You can't afford to disgrace yourself to be amongst them. They shout too much, they sing too much, they dance too much. They act kind of funny. What kind of devil is upon them? You just blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. But you know better than to set in one of them little tabernacles mission on the street. Why them people off their head? No, they're not. No, they're not. They're just off their heart. That's all. They're not off their head. They're just controlled by their heart. God lives in his heart, in their heart. And they are peculiar people. A royal priesthood offering spiritual sacrifice. That's the fruits of the lips giving praise to God whether they feel like it or not. Or at, at, at times I do not see him, said the songwriter. I trust and give him praise. And then uh, also these people would say, paragraph 90, he said, well, I'll go to church and I'll praise the Lord if I feel like. Well, now a priest is to make a sacrifice. And you congregation, a high priest of God, to make a spiritual sacrifice. That's the fruits of your lips giving praise to God. You go down and say, well, if I felt like it, I'll go over and testify to somebody. Well, do it anyhow. If you're a high priest brother, it's burning in your heart. Whether you feel like it or not. Go do it anyhow because you've got to make a sacrifice. Something that's hard to do. You go do it anyhow. You're a spiritual priesthood. A royal people, people giving praise to God because God lives in the heart. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, of course, we're talking about the serpent seed. Paragraph 90, 92. Amen. But if you're born of, if you're of Satan, you feel that you're just a little better than some of the other class of people. No, we... Now, how are you going to know which one's right? Take it by the scriptures. If a man born of God, he believes every word of God wrote and says he's just exactly great there as he ever was. And he never changes. He's just the same yesterday, today and forever. He's, so, he's filled with the Holy Ghost. He got the same Holy Ghost he gave on the day of Pentecost and makes him act the same way and do the same thing. If he's born of the Spirit of God, Mark 16, Jesus said, These signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. So what we know, brother and sister, <coughs> that the signs, the fruits, you shall know them. Amen. When you see a man doesn't want to know about God at all, when you see he's blaspheming against the things that you're telling him, or he's blaspheming against you, he say, well, I don't want to come in your church. I see people catch some kind of spirit and, and some kind of jingay thing or some kind of jingay power or some kind of nonsense or some of obia power or some of... They have blasphemed away their rights. They are, they are serpent seed. It's the end. It cannot happen, brother. You cannot blaspheme the Holy Ghost. The seed word that is in you cannot blaspheme against the Holy Spirit because the Holy Ghost is in you. You cannot speak against the Holy Spirit. Amen. I don't want to come in your church. I see people falling down and stuff. I don't want to fall down. I don't know what kind of spirit is that. Brother, now you know the difference. Don't be ashamed. Identify the spirit. You tell them, you're, off your, you, you, you're listening to the devil. If they have blaspheme, you will tell you're of the father of the devil. You're a beast, son of the beast, son of the serpent. Amen. And their bo very body is the son of the serpent. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Seventy weeks of Daniel. Jefferson Ville, India. Now, don't be afraid, brother. Make your stand. Your son, your daughter of God, God call you. A light shine inside of you. It shine upon that seed word that is inside of you. You are son, you are daughter of God. Nothing could harm you, brother. You know, the devil is squeezing this world. The devil is taking control of this world. Lord. Who is in control of all these injections and all these uh, sickness that they let loose? And more is being let loose. Who do you think is in charge of these things, brother? Do you think it's God's people? No. It's their off. Their father, the devil. Amen? That's all, brother. They are of the father, the devil. Did this, didn't Satan tell Jesus, I own all his kingdoms. All the kingdoms of the world, I own it all. 
Amen. Bow down and worship me. I'll give it to you. Jesus knew better. He knew that when he died in Calvary, they're going to be seed. Amen. He's going to reproduce himself. Amen. Just like Adam reproduced himself in the physical. Amen. Amen. He is going to reproduce himself in the, in the spiritual. So he is going to have seeds, sons and daughters walking in this earth. You who are alive and remain. Oh, are the coming of the Lord Jesus. Sons and daughters of God. You are the second Eve. Amen. Glory to God. And if the first Adam was a quickening spirit, what would that Eve be also? Because she's flesh of his flesh. She's born of his bone. What would his bride Eve be? She will not be like the first Eve. She'll hold on to that spirit. She'll hold on to him. She will say, Lord Jesus, I love you. Lord Jesus, I adore you. I don't want to hear it. my womb is closed. Hallelujah. To every other doctrine. To every other thing that will come against your word. My womb is shut. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. No man, no other, no other beast. No other serpent will let, I will even come near me because I love you so much, Jesus. Amen. I'm flesh of your flesh. I'm bone of your bone. I came out of you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Do you understand, brother and sister? You came out of him. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Before I go more into the woman's seed, let's read the last quote I'm going to get on, on uh, the seventh week of Daniel. Paragraph 23. Quote, brother the seed of the serpent. That's the killer. Many people don't believe it. But if you'll just read in Genesis, the Bible said that the serpent had a seed. And I'll put enmity between the serpent seed and the woman's seed. Oh, that, I interject it. That's why you always have these people telling you these things from other churches. That's why they're persecuting you. Why are they persecuting you? Do you think bride persecute bride? Why do you think they're doing this to you? It's because they're what? Influenced by the serpent seed. Oh, some might be saved. We don't know if they don't blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Some might be saved, but they're influenced by the serpent seed. Oh, glory to God. Continue the quote. And Jesus, and the Bible said the serpent had a seed. And I'll put enmity between the serpent seed and the woman's seed. So the serpent had a seed. And if the serpent seed was spiritual, then Jesus was not a man. Now listen what Brother Ram say. If the serpent seed was spiritual, then Jesus was not a man. So the serpent seed is what? Physical. Amen? The serpent seed is a real thing. Descendant. As I just say, how do you understand, how do you know the serpent seed? Amen. Somebody blaspheme against his Holy Spirit. Somebody tell you you're a crank. Somebody, you're to speak evil of that, that Holy Spirit that is in you. How do you know? Then that person is of the serpent seed. That body that you see in there looking at you. Amen. That has an evil spirit living in them. Is the serpent seed, the physical serpent seed. Here would Brabant say, and if the serpent seed was spiritual, and then Jesus was not a man, so the woman seed was spiritual. Amen? The woman seed was spiritual. They both had seeds, and the enmity is still there. The serpent had a seed. And we'll just take your Bible and get down, be real reverend for God. I believe God will reveal it to you. Amen? So the serpent had a seed. And how do you know the serpent seed? What kind of characteristic is a serpent seed? Let's take Cain for instance. Cain was a murderer. Cain was a liar. Cain challenged God. Who, who, God, what are, you asking me? what are you asking me these questions? Am I my brother keeper? He's talking to supernatural being. Supernatural eternal father. How could you talk to him like that? Because he was seed of the serpent. Amen. He physically, and because of that physical nature, he took on the nature of his puppy. And who was his puppy? The beast, the serpent. So Cain took on the nature of the puppy. So you see all these serpent seeds that are walking upon the face of the earth. Murderers and killers and liars and cheat, thieves and blasphemers. Amen. What are they? They are manifesting their, 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 their attributes of their puppy. The beast, the serpent. Amen. There are only very few upon this earth who are seeds of, of, of the great eternal spirit of the second Adam. So the first Adam had physical seeds. The second Adam had spiritual seeds. But we in a physical body oh, of the first Adam. Amen. You think, you think God will let me live in a, in a, in a body of, of, of Satan? 
or I mean a body of the of the uh, of the Satan, the Sat- uh, serpent seed. He's not going to do it. He cares every. What did he say? Your flesh of my flesh, your bone of my bone, your spirit of my spirit. No, you say, well, Brother Sipasad, why am I so sick all the time? Well, we are still in a body form. Adam was an animal body form. You, do you know, you who follow the Holy Ghost, you are descendant from Adam? You are descendant directly from Noah? Amen? You are descendant directly. Amen? You know, you're not a serpent seed. Amen? That's why your body is going to be changed. That's why your body is going to be changed. Because what? You, you are part of the seed of the woman. And the seed of the woman is who? The Lord Jesus Christ. What is what it says? I'm repeating it again. Your flesh of his flesh, bone of his bone, spirit of his spirit. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. You are going to be transformed one of these days. So, so why how do we know that? How do we know that? Because we are not a murderer. We are not a thief. We are not a fornicator. We're not a liar. What, what were they just saying? I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I'm redeemed by the second Adam blood. Physical blood. Now remember there's two things taking place. There's a physical atonement must take place. Just as the blood shed in the Garden of Eden. When, when the beast had sex with Eve. Blood must cover that. Amen. That's why God slay two lamb. He slay a lamb. Lord, uh, and, he gave, and he wrapped Adam and Eve in a lamb. Blood must cover blood. But that was a temporary sacrifice of blood. God made his first sacrifice in the garden. In the, in the, in the, uh, well, probably it didn't happen in the garden itself. It was outside the garden. Amen. He, he just slayed a lamb. Amen. He slayed a lamb. And what did he do? He clothed Eve and Adam. Amen. But that was a sign of what? That the lamb on Calvary was to be slain. So when the lamb was to be slain, what did God do? The spirit... That was in Christ. The Holy Ghost. He sent it back 50 days afterwards. Amen. And he, and he, what was it? Oh, Adam was reproduced. The second Adam was reproducing himself. The, oh, oh, glory to God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Feel an anointing on that. The second Adam, the quickening spirit, the seven color rainbow that was living in a man was now reproducing himself down the seven church ages. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Did you see that happen anytime before in the Old Testament? No. But there were signs. There were wonders. He was showing them what he was going to do. But only after the 50 days, hallelujah, on the day of Pentecost, then God was able to bring forth his what? His seven color rainbow trout children. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. What a privilege, brother. Don't you understand what a privilege you had this morning? A privilege that you are one of his trout, rainbow colored trout children. Amen. So the second Adam. Now let's look. This is scripture, brother. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing heresy here. I'm matching scripture with scripture. Because there's always two, two things. is an ecclesiastical explanation which is spiritual. And there's a physical application to every word that comes out of the Bible. Amen. So now we're looking at Adam. Adam was what? A living soul. A man. A body. Having all, you know, these 60 men. Just like you. He was just like you. He felt pain just like you when he came out, when he was driven out to the Garden of Eden. He got headaches. He got arthritis. He got, he could, after a while, when he reached 900 something years, he probably couldn't walk. Amen. What was that, brother? He was a man. But then as a man, he had a seed. And that seed was Abel. And that seed was Seth. And that seed was Lamech. And that seed was Cain. And uh, uh, Canaan. Uh, no, I forget, not Canaan. Um, what's his uh, other? Methuselah. And Enoch. And Noah. That was his seed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So as a physical man, the first Adam, he reproduced himself. Amen. And those seeds reproduced themselves. Now Satan does not have a seed. But the seed of the serpent... Also, side by side, represent, reproduce itself and build cities and towers and atomic bombs and wep- atomic, they mess with the atomics and all that stuff. But what, what were the, the true seed of Adam? Who they were? Oh, they were humble people. Why? Because they had the nature of their father, Adam. So, so what about a second Adam? 
O second Adam, had that lowly, holy nature. Oh, hallelujah. Remember the second Adam was formed in the womb of Mary by the Holy Spirit, by the seven color rainbow Elohim. He formed that seed that was in Mary and it grew out into a body. And when that body came out into the world, hallelujah, that Holy Spirit, that logos, that pillar of fire, that greenish, yellowish light came into that body. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, it was born of flesh. So it had a, it had a spirit of flesh. Amen. Amen. And, na- and that nature. Amen. Of, of feeling pain and, and eating and sleeping and going to the bathroom and going to the toilet or whatever. It has all that. Amen. But inside of that, that vessel, inside of that vessel, inside of the second Adam. Oh, hallelujah. Was not Adam of the spirit of the old, but was the Holy Ghost himself. Why did he come on the earth? So that he could give himself as a sacrifice to bring forth the other seed, the part of the woman's seed, the second Adam, a quickening spirit. So what will be that seed? It will not be a physical seed like Adam. We will still have Adam's body. Amen. Or we are descendant of Adam's body. We will still have it. But that physical seed, that physical seed, that spiritual seed is what is living in you. Hallelujah. Because your sons and daughters are God. So dwelling in you. Amen. And what was God doing? Oh, he was pouring out seven spirits into the seven church ages. He wanted to form, he wanted to form his, 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 uh, his, uh, sons of the, sons and daughters of the woman seed. Now, when I say the woman seed, it is Christ. Every time I say woman seed, it is Jesus Christ I'm talking about. Amen. But I'm going back to the promise that God made in, Re- in uh, Genesis chapter three. So that what would God want it? He wanted to bring forth that second Adam. He wanted to bring forth that woman seed the second Adam to bring forth other sons and daughters of this woman's seed amen which was Christ and what was Christ doing on Pentecost oh the Holy Ghost amen that was in Jesus now the spirit that was in Jesus broke up and came and his little licks of fire now you say well Brasi Basada I can't understand that how that could be how could God break up we are talking about a supernatural being that we in our mind cannot even figure it out he could be here there he could be all over amen because he knows and sees he's omnipotent omniscient amen that's our lord that's our savior that's our king that's our father amen 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 so a great eternal one that was our lord jesus christ amen the woman seed came forth amen amen and he had what was his nature he healed the sick he raised the dead he was the blind he, he, he opened the eyes of the blind what did he do he had compassion. He had mercy. Oh, sure, he was tired. He was exhausted. Sure, but he had the word that was living in him because he was that word. And we are part of that woman's seed. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. How do you know you're part of the woman's seed? You show the same seven characteristic of God by the same seven spirits. That's why you must have faith and virtue and knowledge and temperance and patience and godliness and brotherly love, brotherly kindness. It must come in you. And not only that, it must flow out. Amen. That's your nature, brother and sister. That's your nature. Amen. You must add word upon word upon word upon word anointed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. You will have a nature of Christ, a nature of the seven spirits that came to the seven church ages. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. Lord, I praise you and worship you. So let's just read here. Paragraph 180, the woman seed, the woman seed which was Christ, Mary brought forth Christ, brought forth Christ. and the serpent seed which was Cain, came down to Judas Iscariot. There was both Jesus and Judas incarnate right there, God and the devil. On the cross there were four people dying. There was a thief on each side of Ju- Jesus, and Judas hung himself on a sycamore tree, which is a cross. Cursed is he that hung it on a tree. There was one thief that said, If thou be the Son of God, take us down. The other one said, Lord, we do justly. We are getting punished, but you are doing nothing. Remember me. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, Thou shalt be with me in paradise. There was Jesus, the gospel preacher, preaching on the cross. There was Satan going back to hell, taking with him the seed of the serpent, the unbeliever. There was God going back to heaven, taking with him a repentant sinner, the seed of the woman. Certainly. So you see, there, there, bro, Barnum identified the repentant woman as a seed of, the repentant sinner as a seed of the woman. 
Amen. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. So it was not the seed of the devil. It was the seed of the serpent. And the serpent had a seed. Certainly, the Bible said it had a seed. And it still exists today. The seed of the serpent. So much. Amen. Just want to find if everything is going. Praise God. Amen. So that's the seed of the serpent. Not the seed of the devil. Amen. The seed of the serpent. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I have so much other more quotes, but we run out of time. We're going to, might close a little, a little earlier today, but here it is now. So, so we have identified two seeds. <clears throat> there are two seeds upon the earth. Right? There's the serpent seed, the physical serpent seed, and then there's a the spiritual aspect of it. <clears throat> because the physical serpent seed will have all these evil spirits. Amen? <clears throat> now, the, there's not a spiritual, let me see if I get this right, there's not a spiritual serpent seed. Amen? What is it? It is the devil. It is the devil. Amen? Because the beast couldn't be like Jesus and send back his spirit upon other people. So there's not a spiritual serpent seed. The serpent seed is that person that reject the Lord Jesus, blaspheme the Holy Spirit. But that is not, that is a serpent seed body. There is not a spiritual serpent seed. No, try to understand what I'm saying. Don't get me wrong. Everything is of the devil that controls this world. But the serpent didn't have a spirit that could live and come through all his ages as Jesus Christ, the second Adam, anointed his people and brought forth his sons and daughters. The serpent couldn't do it. But all that could happen is that the devil now could anoint the serpent seed to bring forth, uh, um, not uh, to, to, to come against the children of God. I have to be very careful. Or I don't want people to misunderstand me. Because the serpent has a seed. And Prabhupada said that seed is physical. So when you see a person, as I said, blaspheming against the Holy Spirit, coming against you, in high places, like we know some of them, they are what? They are seeds of the serpent. But physical. Because in them, they take on the nature, the nature of their father, which is a serpent. So we understand there are two seeds. So now there is a seed <clears throat> that came from Calvary. And what was the seed? This seed is the seed of the woman. So you are a repentant sinner. You are saved by grace, full of the Holy Spirit. You have become a seed of the woman, which is Christ. Amen? So now, I'm going to talk about something uh, that is taking place here now in our life. So we have two seeds. Remember that. And most of the serpent seeds are all in governments and control of governments and politicians and all these. Those are the seeds of the serpent. Big scientists that say, uh, take the, uh, take the, take the, <clears throat> the injection and uh, you'll be better and you'll never get sick again. You, well, if you take this injection... You, nothing will bother you. You'll get no other sickness. What a lie. They're telling you, take this injection, you'll never get any sickness. Take this uh, injection, it is better than your natural immune. What? Crazy. <clears throat> These are seeds of the serpent, brother. Or understand, identify that these are seeds of the serpent. Uh, what they want to do? They don't care really about, about their other brothers and sisters who are, who are seeds of the serpent. They care about you. But the only thing that they could do to you is to get, try to get to this flesh. That's all. Why? You're sealed of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> so there are two seeds. So let's go now. Let's read. We want to read Joel chapter 2.28 <clears throat> for a few minutes before we close. We want to read Joel chapter 2.28. We want to talk about this anointing. <clears throat> now remember, the Greek translation says that afterwards, the translation is in the last days. <clears throat> so it shall come to pass afterwards, in parenthesis, in the last days, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Let's stop right there. He says, what did God say? In the last days, he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. 
That means he is going to pour out the spirit upon the serpent seed and upon you, the seed of the woman. Didn't the Bible just said that? He said all flesh, and there are only two types of flesh on the earth. There's flesh of the seed of the serpent and the flesh of the seed of God. Two of Adam. Two physical flesh. The flesh of the seed of the serpent and the flesh of the seed of Adam. And if we are bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, spirit of his spirit, then we are not seeds of the serpent. We are seeds of Adam. Flesh, I'm talking about. Spiritually, we are seed of the woman. Now that's uh, the spiritual second Adam. I hope you're understanding. So here what the Bible says in, 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 uh, in, um, in Joel. It says what? In the last days, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. All, 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 all. And what does all flesh is? Seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. Let's just read in Hebrews 6, 7 to 9. You say, well, brother, see, Passad, that's a very profound statement you're making here. But that's a Bible. Did the Bible say all flesh? Or did he say only the flesh of the children of God? No, he didn't say that. The Bible say all flesh. Amen. And I, I quote this from a brother. Brother, um, I think it's Tom um, um, Cajon, I think, from uh, Tennessee. He was preaching up at Tim, Tim um, <clears throat> um, Cajon, I believe, from Tennessee. He was preaching uh, up in Ocala, the, the Family of God Church, of which uh, <coughs> Brother um, Underwood was pastor. And that struck me. It re I never seen it that way before. So let's read now. Now remember, all flesh. That means see the serpent and the seed of the woman. That means me and you who follow the Holy Ghost and those people who are um, up in the governments and the doctors and the, and the doctor, um, all the ones that are saying what needs to be done against our bodies. Let's read in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. For the earth, for the earth drinketh in the rain that cometh off upon it, and bringeth forth herbs meet for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth in blessings from God. But that which is bare of thorns and briars is rejected, and is near to cursing, whose end is to be burned. But beloved, we are we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation through thus we speak. So you just see. He said the rain is falling for the herbs and for the thorns. The rain falls. Physical rain. Let's read, read Matthew 5 verse 44 to 45. Let's read Matthew 5 verse 44 to 45. 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them that despisefully use you and persecute you. Who would do that? Serpent seed. Unless they are sons and do or, or, or serpent seed who blaspheme the Holy Ghost. That they may be children, that ye may be children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his sun to shine, to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth the rain on the just and the unjust. See? That's what the Bible says. God sends the Holy Spirit, this anointing upon the whole world. So now you see in now someone mentioned me, he said, Brother Sipasad, over the we were talking, over the last, I don't know, not, not, not even five years, the world has gone mad. So what is it telling me? If the world has gone mad, they are anointed by something. And what are they anointed? The Holy Spirit is coming upon them, and that Satan seed, that serpent seed that is in them, is coming up to maturity into life. And they are what? They are liars, they are cheat. They are liars, they are cheat. They are liars, they are cheat. They are adulterers, fornicators and all this stuff. And it's what? The Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Lord Jesus is over them all. And when this anointing is like the rain, when the rain falls, what happened? The tears come up, the wheat come up, the fruit trees come up, the poisonous trees come up, the stinging nettle uh, and uh, poison ivy come up. All these things come up. Why? Because it's a law. 
God pours an anointing. And here what he says in Joel. He says, I'll pour it on all flesh. And what is this all flesh? Seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman, which is you and I. Seed of the serpent. So what you're seeing, all these people are lying and they're not even, you know, repentant of their lies. And they're being found out, people saying things that they're lying and they're not, they're not even bothering. They're lying so much and they, the murder and killing and abortions and all these kind of things that has taken place. And, and, and nobody's saying anything. They can't do anything. Why? Because there's hundred thousand thousand supernatural charges have, uh, have left, have left this world. I mean, I'm sorry, has left the pit of hell and upon the earth and anointing them. So, what are you saying, Brother Sipasad? I'm saying, these seeds, because of the anointing that is upon the whole earth, are raising up, amen, and displaying what is exactly in them. So what that means for us, brother and sister? It means to say that the Spirit of the Lord has raised a standard. The Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, the anointing, it's more powerful upon us now. It's growing us. It's bringing us. What is happening, Brother Sipasad? The trumpet is being blown. The Jubilee trumpet is being blown. We don't have long again, brother. Come, brother, sit down. Think about this. Pray about this. We don't have long. If not now, when? Amen. I'd rather be wrong in saying that the coming of the Lord is very, very close. And within, who knows? Amen. I'm not given time. But, uh, you know, the prophets say somewhere around December. I'm so, when I'm saying December, I mean um, April. Amen. Uh, around Easter. We don't know exact time. Nobody knows the day nor the hour. He said around that time is when there's resurrection. When there's life. Amen. Around springtime. So I'm looking for resurrection around that time. Amen. If it, it didn't come in this, in this year, I'm looking for it next year. Amen. I'm looking to see if the trumpet didn't, wasn't, the jubilee trumpet wasn't blown on the 10th of October this year. I'm looking for it to be blown next year. Uh, that is what I'm looking. I'm looking every day. I want to live every day. I want to worship my Lord every day. I want to be that son of, that son and daughter of God that is manifesting that seed of the woman. Hallelujah. Oh, that seed of the woman, which is Christ. Amen. He has reproduced himself. Amen. And he's living in me. He's living in you. We want to be, amen, like sons and daughters of God. Hallelujah. The sun shines on the just and the unjust. The rain fall on the just and the unjust. Amen. What it is, is the same water as water in them. Is the same water as water in you. But the difference is, they are seeds of the serpent. And you are the seed of, oh, hallelujah, seed of the woman. Amen. That came from Calvary. You are gentile warrior. Amen. I know your position. That you are seed of the woman in this last days. That's the only time in this gentile church age. Is when the seed of the woman has become manifest. Because Jesus, Jesus reproduced himself once again in human skin. How oh, he's reproducing himself in human skin by seven spirits that come through seven church ages. By seven spirits that's going to live in you in this last day that you walking out and say, oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? Why? Because, oh hallelujah, you are, you are, you are seed of the second Adam. And that second Adam is not just a physical being. No sir, that second Adam gave up of his spirit. That second Adam is a quickening spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. The rain is falling upon you, brother. What are you going to do with this rain? Amen. What are you going to do with this rain? Amen. Hallelujah. It's a law of God. God spoke it in Joel. It's happening today. What is it? Is the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon you? What are you going to do with it, brother and sister? What are you going to do with it? Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. What it is, it's the anointing upon you. Elijah felt that anointing when the Shunammite woman, when that, I think it was the, Shum, Shunam, the widow woman, when she lost her son. Hallelujah. Elijah had the, the anointing, but he walked down, Lord, to that room. He walked down to that room and he lay himself upon the child. He was waiting for that anointing of the quickening power. Amen. That quickening power. Amen. Was Jesus Christ in the form of the logos. Hallelujah. And that quickening power came upon Elijah. Elijah. Amen. And the child rose up. Amen. Elisha was dead and gone. His, he, was, he had bones. His bones were there in a, in a tomb. Hallelujah. His bones were there in a sepulchre. But that quickening power, that second Adam, hallelujah, power, that spirit 
not the second Adam himself when he came upon the earth. No, sir. That spirit that was, uh, in, uh, that was going to be in the second Adam. Amen. That spirit was uh, anointing that bones. Amen. Why? Because he was a son of Adam. Hallelujah. Elisha was a son of Adam. That physical body was a son of Adam. Hallelujah. And that was a son of God. So that quickening power was upon him. And what happened? Amen. They, they were going to bury a man. And when they, they saw the Philistines coming, amen, the marching Philistine army, they got scared. They couldn't bury the man. So what they did, they threw the man into the sepulcher where Elisha was. And what was there? What? The bones of Elisha. Quickening power of that second Adam. Amen. That was to come in that second Adam. Amen. It was upon Elisha's bone. And the man, the dead body, when it touched Elisha, he got up and ran out. Amen. He was, he was raised from the dead. Nobody prayed. Nobody say, come out of the grave. No, 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 no. Nothing like that. What was it? Hallelujah. Amen. It was that quickening power. The quickening spirit. Amen. That God was going to send down on Calvary. After when Jesus rose from the dead. That's the quickening power. Amen. That rose. Amen. Uh, that dead man from the grave. Hallelujah. Samson. Samson was a skinny man. A ruddy, the Bible says ruddy kind of man. Skinny. He can't probably even lift a hundred pound weight or whatever. Skinny man. Amen. Hallelujah. Was a, they say he was like a shyster boy. His mommy's boy. Oh, hallelujah. But when the Spirit of the Lord, hallelujah. When that quickening power, hallelujah. When that power that was to come down in the day of Pentecost. Glory to God. When that power, God was, you know what God was doing? He was showing his example. He's revealing it a little bit. He was telling the people, this is what is going to happen down the road. I'm giving you a short, small measure. About Samson, I'm giving you a small measure of that uh, second Adam. I'm giving you a small measure of that seed of that woman. Oh, hallelujah. Um, uh, Samson, I'm going to anoint you, Samson, with a small measure. But that seed of the woman is coming down the road. But you're going to get an anointing so you could see the greater works that could be done. <coughs> Amen. And what happened? They bind up Samson, all kind of cords and stuff. Amen. And, this, and um, they, they say, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. Samson, raise up under the power of the Holy Spirit. Samson, raise up under the power of the seed of the woman. Samson, raise up under the power of the Logos. Amen. A portion. And he raised up there and he broke all those chains. Amen. He went and took the gate. They say, we'll lock him up inside the gate. But Samson, what he did, he took the gate on his shoulder, he ripped the gate out of its, of its hinges, took it on his shoulder and went on the hill and put it on his hill. What was it? Amen. It's the anointing of that quickening power. It was the anointing of the seed of the woman. It was the anointing of the Holy Spirit of the man Christ Jesus. Is a portion that anointed. Why was God doing this? So he would show the world what was coming. He would show the world what was coming on the day of Pentecost. He was going to show the world what is coming uh, 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 when the, those who are alive and remain. That's going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. He was showing them what is happening. Amen. Hear what Brother Branham say, Amen. Amen, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hear what Brother Branham say, The Lamb and the Dove, Oakland, California, Monday the 25th of March, 1957, paragraph E27. Hear what the Bible says, Amen. Uh, quote Brother Branham, Is not it true that the Bible says the rain falls on the just and the unjust? The sh sun shines on the just and the unjust? You take a wheat field, and the little heads are turning over. It's a drought. The old stinkweeds, and the briar vine and the stick ties, all of them out in the field, they're just as thirsty as the wheat, as the wheat. It's a vision I saw once. And they were all needing rain. And when the showers came, the little wheat raised up his head and rejoiced. And the stink wheat raised up his head and, and rejoiced. And the creeper raised up his head and rejoiced. They were just as proud to get the rain as the rest of them. But brother, one of them was bearing the fruit of the wheat. And the other was bearing the fruit of something else. And the Holy Spirit falls into a meeting. And sometimes the believer and unbeliever worship by the same Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit proves what you are. Not the reaction of the Spirit. Not to speak with tongues. Not to shout. That goes with it too. But that's all that goes with it. But unless the fruit of the Spirit bears record with God's word. You are just, out, just got an outward demonstration. Amen. And today we are relying on so much on outward emotions and demonstration when it takes a genuine, pure, uh, pure, born again, Holy Spirit life, led life to prove who you are. 
and I interject here. Oh, I believe the prophet message. I, I, but, but you know, some of the things the prophet say, I can't understand it. Maybe he was wrong. You know, you can't, you know, Brother Branham was a man. We can't take all that he said, you know, he was a man. We can't take, you do, you understand a prophet says things for a reason? What did Jesus say? Except you eat my flesh, you drink my blood, you have no part of me. Think about that. Oh my goodness, this man is a barbarian. How are we going to eat his flesh? He going to ro- we going to kill him, get his blood. He going to roast his flesh. We going to eat it. He was talking what spiritual, and that's how God does it. Amen. That's how God sends his prophet. Think about Isaiah. Remember, I told you about Isaiah. Seven hundred years. What about Malachi? Two thousand years and more. So, brother, just and then these ministers will say, well. You only quoting, 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 quoting. You know, he said, "Oh, the cedar serpent quote." Well, you well, you probably cedar serpent quote, but I'm saying it is also written. Amen. I say like my, my uh, like I'm a seed of the woman seed, which is Jesus. So I'm saying, Satan, minister, brother, that uh, that you allow Satan to deceive you, lad. I'm also. It's also written, the prophet word. Amen. So. Um, and the Holy Spirit falls into a meeting. Oh, here we're continuing. Unless there is fruit, and the fruit of the Spirit is not outward demonstration, it's an inward work of grace, love, joy, peace, long suffering, goodness, faith, meekness, gentleness, uh, patience. There you are. Amen. Hallelujah. End of quote. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. So say the Spirit, the Holy Spirit could fall on a hypocrite. The Bible said that. He could fall on a hypocrite. They could jump and speak in tongues, feel good. But it could be seed of the serpent. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I have to bypass for a lot of these. Quote, show us the Father and it will suffice us. Salem, uh, or Oregon, 22nd of July, 1962, paragraph E54. Now we have just passed a great revival. Swept the land. 15 years nearly it went on. What are we reaped out? We reaped out a bunch of new members. Yeah. Why? That's what kind of seed we sowed. Remember, the rain falls on the earth to water it, to dress it, for which it's prepared for. And now remember, if you had a field of wheat out there, it was growing and you had little heads were hanging over. When you see something to sturdy, it's self-style. A heavy head always bows. I hope you get it. So now notice. But a little weed standing there and it's a drought. People are praying for rain. Well, the little weed's going, "Uh uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, you know, uh, Branham imitates a panting sound. The little wheat is thirsty. It just can't. It just can't ha- ha- hardly get along any longer. It's going to die. The little wheat is just about happy to get a water as it would. God sends the rain. And you know what? When the rain falls, that little wheat straightens up and says, Glory to God! It shouts and praises God because it comes to life. And the same water makes the wheat grow just as happy, can shout just as loud. And that's what Jesus said, if you want to read it. Hebrews 6, chapter. I haven't got time to go into it. It says, the rain cometh oft upon the earth, and the rain falls on the just and the unjust. We can see people speaking in tongues, dancing the Spirit, everything else. They don't know. They, that doesn't mean they got it. Oh, no. I've seen many of them do it and don't, uh, and don't have it. But by their fruits you shall know them, the Holy Spirit fruit. It's the Word of God. Souls are in prison. It's a Word living. There it is. There you are, you, if you only look, he was Messiah. He was the living word made manifest. And a man that's got the spirit of God in him, or a woman, lives that word, lives right out in them. That's the heartbeat, the predestinated for the word of God comes to them. And they are the word of God, written epistles, read of all men. We talking about what? The seed of the woman. Uh, Jesus Christ reproducing himself in this Gentile age. Amen. Written epistles, read of all men. Uh, right now, uh, could, uh, could the third pole be on? Tape people, that's you listening to this tape. I wish you could look at this congregation this moment. I hope you're feeling the same way. What, what if it is? Look at the scripture. <coughs> Pile, could it be? Is the third pole, is the third pole to preach the eternal doom that's rejected the message of the salvation? So what, I uh, interject here. What, Barbara, I'm saying, could it be? That this, the seed of the woman will, is going to preach to the, to the seed of the serpent? It has to be. Because Jesus went down into hell and preached the souls that were imprisoned there. 
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But remember, all this time, Noah was in the ark. The bride is sealed with Christ. The last member has been redeemed. The sixth seal had produced itself. The seventh seal breaks forth back to the earth. The lamb come and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat on the throne and claimed what he owned, that he had redeemed that. That's right. That's why it's always been that third pole. Three is perfection. The ministry come to its perfection. When it produced, it reproduced Jesus again in natural amongst human beings as we predicted as it was in the days of Lord. Oh, think people. You hear what Brother Abraham said here? That woman's seed, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, will reproduce himself in this last days. The same signs, same wonders, same miracles, same life, same compassion. And not only that, they will stand and say, Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? For death is swallowed up in victory. Who are they? So they are sons and daughters of God. They are the reproduce, reproduce seed of the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the pillar of fire dwelling in Him. Hallelujah. The eternal Elohim. Oh, what they are? The seed of the woman. Oh, hallelujah. Continuing the quote. And three is, per, uh, uh, three is perfection. The ministry comes to its perfection when it reproduces Jesus Christ again in natural amongst humans being as we predicted as it was in the days of flood. To think, oh people, could go on right on preaching, thinking they are getting saved, believing they are doing right, believing their organization are growing, and not even a ray of hope. If that vision was that, it's been so hard against women, we have come to that hour. The doors is closed, gone. Already the book in his hand. Think about it, brother and sister. Could it be, end of quote, could it be my brother and sister? Oh, that God, that Jesus Christ, the seed of the woman, reproducing himself once again and anointing you. Now that anointing is upon you. Why? Because we've seen it out in the world. We've seen all these, uh, all these politicians and all these. What are they doing, brother and sister? They're anointed. Their eyes are blind. What is it going on? Because the, the uh, Joel 2, 28 says Joel 2 I'm sorry 28 yes it says what I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh brother and sister the Holy Spirit has, is, is pouring out upon the whole world so it's upon you this morning accept reach out by faith grab a hold uh, of this anointing that's supposed to come on the seed of the woman you are a, a member of the bride of Jesus Christ a reproduction of the second Adam. The second Adam reproducing himself once again in this last days. Reach out, brother and sister, and you shall receive. So shall we stand? Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, praise. We come to the end of the broadcast. We pray that God bless you. Pray that He keep you. Brother, know who you are. Recognize who you are. Let the Holy Spirit deal with you. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Father God, Oh Lord God, uh, we're so thankful that you're able to, to feed unto us this word of God, to know that we are flesh of your flesh, bone of your bone, spirit of your spirit. We are not serpent seed. And the serpent seed is not a spiritual thing. The serpent seed is a natural thing. This body that is here is of the Holy Spirit. Why? Your word said we are flesh of your flesh. We are bone of your bone, spirit of your spirit. So we are not a descendant of the serpent seed. Oh, hallelujah. We are descendant of Adam, hallelujah. Oh, although we are in a physical uh, um, be a body of, uh, of animals, Lord. But Lord God, what we know, hallelujah, that we are descendant of Adam. Hallelujah. Not only physically, but spiritually descendant of the second Adam. Because we are born of the second Adam, hallelujah. Born of his bone, flesh of his flesh, spirit of his spirit, hallelujah. That the anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ is upon us. Just as that anointing is there, bringing out those evil seeds of the world, the anointing is upon us as wheat. And we are rejoicing, knowing that the time is of our hand. You're going to bundle all those, all those uh, filthy denominations and so on, Lord, and denominations that are in this message, Lord. You're going to bundle them all up, Lord. The prophet already bundled all the denominations of the world when he was here. So you go bundle all the rest of them to be ready to be burnt by fire. But hear your cry of your people this morning, the cry of your bride, the cry of the ones that say, Lord, I'm flesh of your flesh. I'm bone of your bones, spirit of your spirit. We need healing, Lord. Your word said, Brother Branham said that divine healing would be a great thing amongst us. Help us, Lord, this morning. And help us, Lord, we pray. Oh, God and Lord, as we dismiss, Lord, may you touch the people. 
May you bless them. May you anoint them. May you strengthen them. May you give them grace during the day, during the week. Let them know who they are, Lord. Let them know it is your spirit and who they are as sons and daughters of God. Grant it, O great eternal God, I pray. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. And should you tarry and we come again on Wednesday, um, Lord, uh, you lead us according to your divine will. How it should be, Lord, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen, amen, and amen. O oh, take the name of Jesus with you. So the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. And may he be gracious unto you. Give you joy, love, peace, and healing. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Child of sorrow and of woe, it will joy and comfort give you. Take his name wherever you go, O oh, precious name, O oh, how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. God bless you, in Jesus Christ's name, amen. Praise the name of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord. Thank you.